Um, well, uh, first of all, uh, I apologize because I, I couldn't be here in this afternoon session. Hmm? Today, I want to talk about some uh, specific uh, collaborative uh, model to teach in general uh, science, no? more specifically uh, experimental science. Uh, well, uh, the idea that I want to transmit you is uh, to invite you to uh, demolish walls. No? Uh, and uh, why? Why I am inviting you to demolish walls? Uh, this is because, as we know, walls are something that divide, that isolate, uh, that uh, uh, separate in general, no? don't uh, give access to communication and so on. No? Uh, the idea is if we can uh, demolish walls, uh, maybe we could uh, solve uh, some big problems, no? or not really big, but some problems. No? And uh, we already know that uh, some of these problems could be solved uh, easily working uh, as a team. Mm? And in a team, it's essential to work uh, uh, without walls, mm? having communication, uh, unifying, listening, uh, and uh, at the end working in a collaborative way. Mm? Uh, so my, my, my idea is uh, uh, that uh, these walls no, uh, has, have to be demolished in all the senses. No? In particular, I think in physics it's very uh, important. No? Uh, uh, we already know that physics is uh, as a whole no? Uh, experimental science that can, that want to explain the nature and perhaps to uh, provide some um, um, predictions about how it's going to to act. Um, but uh, unfortunately, uh, in sometimes, no, with uh, the people thinks that. There are two kinds of physics, no? the theoretical physics and experimental physics. And I think this is a big error. No? And in fact, when I was a student uh, beginning to study here in, the, in, in this faculty, in this really nice university, uh, I really appreciate no? how the physics uh, is a complement of two really important things, the theoretical and the experimental one. Um, I could uh, be in love no, with this um, unification of these things only twice during all my career, no, during, during five sem uh, nine semesters, no, because in the middle I had the bad experience that experiment was one and theory was another. No. But um, even though I, in the last semester I really was in love with experimental things, um, I, but, but because of many circumstances, I decided uh, not to do experimental physics. No? In fact, I am something like some people call theoretical physics. <laughs> but I tried to do something that could be applied uh, in some way. No? Not is really uh, an abstract research, research that I like to do. Um, and. Uh, well, that was my experience like an, a student. No? And then when I became a teacher here in the faculty that I really love it, uh, I could be more um, involved no? with uh, the things that are happening in our teaching um, um, programs, no? uh, in particular in physics. Uh, and I saw that this wall is uh, unfortunately still living no? in some many cases no? uh, so uh, as a, I, uh, I think we we should uh, destroy them no? and uh, and also uh, we had some problems and some of them has been uh, tell him tell tell them here no? that this uh, how is experimental facts uh, are, 
how the experimental facts are, are given to the, the students. No? Sometimes, and most of the times, in fact, no? even in the uh, last uh, year laboratories, no? the experimental things are teached as a really uh, old-fashioned way that is just following a manual. No? Take this, uh, measure this, and then only grab this in this way, and then do this analysis. No? And I think this is not the way to transmit the students what really physics is, and uh, what are they going to um, to work with when they go out to the real world. No? And in this way, we also uh, are not uh, showing them uh, the real physics problems that they are going to work with, and how. Uh, in other way, no? how they can apply physics to solve many, many problems, not only in, uh, in basic uh, themes, but also applied things that I think, like physicists, could be uh, a very good job. Uh, so uh, that's why I thought uh, how to begin to, to demolish these walls and the first step was uh, thinking how to motivate to the students uh, to really get involved in how should be the experimental part in physics um, and how can they involve not only in the typical uh, problems uh, in the lab uh, of a school but also uh, in what is uh, happening around. If we think in every um, uh, physics school, science schools, uh, we have a lot of uh, things that surround uh, the school that could be, uh, that could um, uh, strengthen the, the teaching. Uh, for example, in, in this school, uh, obviously we have the physics uh, uh, career, but also have biology or uh, biomedical physics, industrial uh, uh, um, science, and so on. No? Many experimental science. No? Also, we have mathematics. No? Maybe it's not experimental science, but you will see how also in mathematics uh, we could do things collaboratively. Um, so, uh, inside the faculty, we have a uh, uh, to say something, uh, human resources, no? that could be the teachers, but also the students uh, themselves. And uh, around the faculty, for example, here in our university, we have other centers and institutions uh, of research that also are involved in physics, but not necessarily are involved in teaching physics here at the level of a bachelor. Maybe in the postgraduate program, yes, but not, uh, not all of them are here uh, sharing their knowledge, their experience to bachelor physics, uh, physics students. And if we go outside, no? uh, UNAM no? uh, is my example right now, no? uh, we can find uh, other uh, institutions, uh, maybe of education also, no? or healthy, or uh, industry even, no? where physics is applied. No? And obviously, in all these institutions, there are people, there are human resources uh, uh, that could be the teachers of our students, our uh, facilities, our equipment that is the real equipment that the uh, students are going to work in or with, no? even if they do uh, basic physics or applied physics. So, uh, with this idea on mind, uh, I with this uh, model, I try to to demolish these walls between these circles. So, with this in mind, is is how it uh, well uh, we we think uh, about how to use no, the human resources, the facilities, and the equipment. No? This could be, as I, I told you, no, outside our uh, the faculty or even inside. Uh, so, uh, there are many kind of people, no? May, uh, also um, professors, uh, technicians that are specialized in some uh, specific facts, no? um, and they could be of very different areas, no? for example, no? chemistry, etc. 
uh, medicine. And, uh, that's why I depict here no? the, the kind of uh, uh, facilities that could be involved, no? not only the schools, no? but also uh, industries for um, perhaps hospitals and other kind of um, uh, facilities in which uh, we can learn physics and uh, very different kind of uh, equipment. Uh, so the other very uh, important ingredient for this are the students no? that are, are uh, they are going to be our future scientists perhaps no? or future uh, medical physics or so on, no? a technician, a designer, no? uh, but they are uh, right now starving of knowledge. No? So let's find the way to feed this uh, hungry of knowledge. So uh, taking all these ingredients together no? uh, is uh, how we can build something. No? The, here we have the group of uh, starving uh, of knowledge students. No? Uh, this, they uh, could be fitted by uh, really a, a variety of uh, experts no? in different fields. Uh, in this case, we can think that they are specialized in physics, but could be other fields. No? Um, and, and, and here also is a computer because now, uh, nowadays experimental physics is not only play with things, but only with numbers, analysis of data, etc. And uh, all of this will be supported by the facilities and the equipment. No? In fact, there are some kind of uh, equipment. Obviously, the facilities cannot move, <laughs> but uh, the equipment, yes. No? So it also uh, uh, could be uh, something uh, with movement no? between uh, in every uh, cycle I depict. So, uh, taking in, ac in account no, all these uh, facts, no, a new scheme, a new scheme uh, born, no, and I called it Fortelab Physics Chapter. No. Fortelab is because it's a play, playing with words, the, uh, in Spanish is fortalecimiento, the strength, no, yeah. strength. Uh, it's difficult for me to <laughs> that word. No. And uh, lab because of uh, the laboratory, obviously physics, because we are talking about physics. So, what is Fortelab physics? Uh, it's a collaborative model, as I told you, no? yeah, a way that we can uh, look for, uh, uh, break the walls. No? that uses human resources. These human resources uh, obviously are uh, the experts no? in the field that, uh, in the mo uh, that applies to the model, no? and obviously also the students. No? And uh, important ingredient are the facilities that uh, in a university or big uh, institutions or even small, no? we have uh, uh, high level nowadays uh, facilities. No? And also modern equipment that uh, usually is not present in a school. No? Uh, so how we can organize all these ingredients? Hmm? Uh, we have a group of students and a group of uh, 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 scientists hmm? or specialists or so on hmm? that can collaborate uh, all together, hmm? organized by someone. Hmm? Uh, each, uh, each of them work in uh, their own laboratory, in their own uh, facility. Uh, this, uh, well, you will see, no? this uh, organizer works in the school uh, in, uh, per se. <laughs> no, not me, because I don't teach uh, uh, these experimental courses. No? So how can we structure, uh, can we structure this, uh, all these things? No? So we have the coordinator. No? I, here I want to depict the, to depict, uh, the a specific uh, model that we are applying since three and a half years uh, ago in our physics program to the uh, two laboratories that the students has uh, to mandatory uh, 
uh, course hmm, in the eighth and ninth semesters, in the last year of their studies. Hmm. Uh, obviously, in the other years, they went around uh, five different laboratories, the basic one. Hmm. So I depict especially here that the coordinator could be in charge of six experiments because it's our uh, um, reality right now hmm? uh, with the uh, size of the facilities and the kind of material and so on that we have to teach uh, these specialized courses here in the, in the faculty. And this uh, uh, teacher will be the organizer of the all the team hmm? and uh, she is going to uh, be teaching simulta simultaneously to in this case 12 students. Why 12? Because we are thinking uh, to have uh, 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 um, teams of two people, of two students, of two students working together and uh, why two or not four or six? Hmm? Because uh, with the kind of experiments uh, they had to do is better and they learn more if they are only two. If there is a third, the third only take notes or go to the, for the uh, torta and so on. Hmm? <laughs> so it sometimes happen. Hmm? Not always, but uh, it's often. Hmm? Uh, so uh, this, I, um, we call this structure the fixed group because they work here in the uh, facilities we have in the faculty. So they are in a fixed place working all the semester. And then we complement this with uh, associated uh, professors, uh, teachers, no? that one is in charge of uh, one experiment. Each one of these experiments are proposed by each, by each of these uh, teachers. Uh, uh, these are uh, experiments that are designed uh, expressly for these courses with some rules no, that has to have some uh, specific duration that uh, such a way that the model can work. Um, and uh, each one of these uh, teachers uh, are going to be in charge of one team of two students. So we can make uh, we, that we call uh, uh, a meta group no? in this example of uh, 12 plus uh, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, so 20 people no? uh, taking uh, at the same time the, the course. Um, okay, so uh, we, uh, how, how this work? No? Uh, in the reality, no? we have the meta group no? that is uh, formed of these uh, all students. Here I depict only one because if not, was very charged the, the film. No? And uh, the external disk is the uh, each of each experiment that is in charge of uh, different uh, teachers. The green ones are uh, that. Uh, I called the fixed ones that are here in the faculty and the other colors are uh, the experiments that are implemented in other uh, institutions, in other facilities. Mm -hmm. So uh, please take uh, uh, your attention to this girl no, that uh, has this sector uh, uh, painted in pink just to uh, mark it. No? And when the course begin, no? uh, all the students uh, begin to do an uh, experiment or a practice in the lab uh, in which uh, they, can, they have to go, no? not necessarily here in the faculty, maybe they go to uh, a healthy institution or a museum of science or uh, a research institute no? and they begin to work in their experiment. No? Uh, I didn't mention it, but it is in this design of the experiments is very important that the last thing of each one that uh, we uh, organize in such a way that in our case each experiment lasts one uh, uh, 24 hours, no? and we distribute it in uh, sessions of uh, two days per week, three 
hours or only one day six hours. Uh, so uh, this is important so uh, we know that uh, each month uh, approximately all the students finish their uh, their experiment. No? Since, the, since beginning to study the theory, what are they going to uh, to look for how the equipment uh, has to use the security things uh, and uh, have time to express uh, questions on, of uh, many kinds to the teacher that is uh, in charge, etc. So, at the beginning of the course, no, the students begin to do the first uh, experiment. No. So, the next uh, uh, we call all the think a rotation no? because they change uh, of place. No? This is like visually you can see here. No? They rotate and then they change uh, uh, the, the experiment and uh, then uh, naturally they change the facility, they change the teacher and then change the experiment. No? Uh, they do the second experiment, no? this is the first rotation. No? At the next uh, period of time, they do no? a third experiment uh, second in the second rotation. So, uh, uh, so every uh, team no? in this group uh, could, uh, can, uh, can have the opportunity to make at least one of these uh, associated experiments. No? Uh, so the third rotation and we can go so on, no? as many ro rotations as uh, can be designed for the specific course and for the specific so number of the students and so on. In our actual model that we are applying here because of the kind of experiments and the lasting of the semester, each experiment uh, uh, in average, last one month that are effectively uh, 24 hours. <laughs> so, yes? Where is it located? Uh, in, the, in the lab, in the research lab, or in the special lab facility? In every place. <laughs> we, have, we have here two uh, fixed facilities that, uh, as we have the classroom, no? we have the labs for many. Uh, Courses no? and we have two spa uh, two spaces with like three big tables like this, no? in which there is a stock of specific material to material to do experiment of uh, radiation, uh, black hole radiation. Com uh, some uh, some more more of them are like the quantum uh, basic experiments, no? and some others of um, uh, make a superconducting uh, thing and so on. But uh, that's what they do here. No? And uh, you will see how many uh, experiments uh, the students can do here with our facilities for that uh, courses and with the material we have. But we can expand, expand this uh, using the facilities of laboratories of research, of teaching, uh, workshops, no? uh, uh, the equipment they have, the material they need, and uh, the experiment can vary of, uh, of even of area. No? Uh, so we have a lot of areas, a lot of kind of experiments, uh, not, re not really uh, quantum mechanically, but perhaps classically, but are really interesting nowadays. Mm -hmm. So this model allows some uh, uh, flexibility. So the number of experiments, the lasting of them, the number of students of, and teachers uh, obviously depends no, on many facts that, that uh, obviously the duration of uh, time duration of the courses, uh, the enrollment that is a a very important thing that in, in, in fact here in our faculty is a, a, a bigger and bigger number of students that we receive each uh, year. No? Uh, in the last year uh, we are receiving like uh, 400 uh, students uh, per year so if we want so only in physics, only in physics. So if you want to attend uh, at the end of their studies to all of them, we had to be capable to attend the 
400, and we are not right now. No? Obviously, there are desertion and so on, but uh, you will see that we are capable nowadays to attend 200 simultaneously each semester. No? So um, it depends on all these things. No? And I'm, I'm going to show you the results we have uh, with this uh, specific model uh, applied to these two specific courses during three years and a half, I mean seven semesters. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, well, I think it's a good example that uh, all the benefits it, uh, we could have with this. Um, well, in these three and a half years we have uh, more than 60 new uh, experiments mm? uh, because probably the, uh, all of them uh, not apply at the same time the same semester but one semester yes one semester not some of them mm? yes are repeated all the semesters but the students are different and we uh, take care that these experiments does, don't repeat in uh, the courses no? there are experiments specific for the lab one and experiments for the lab two so the students really could have uh, um, the experience to uh, to learn new things in different areas in different ways. Uh, so here is how our stuff of experiments have been grown in these years. These uh, gray bars represent the fixed uh, experiments the students uh, can do here in our facilities here in the faculty just for that uh, courses no? that, that, that are around 19. No? We have a pool of 19 experiments between the two courses. I, here I am mixing the two courses. No? Um, here we began to apply the model no? and in the first semester we have like the same number, no? like 20 new experiments uh, added to these courses. And, uh, the blue ones hmm, are uh, experiments that were proposed and applied in a semester, in a past semester, and is repeated again. Uh, as you can see, each semester uh, we have always new experiments, and this number is uh, growing up. Hmm? Um, okay, this is the number of groups we have between the two courses. We offer each semester 11 courses, uh, usually five for one course and six for the other and they change each semester. And the pink bars are uh, the number of groups that uh, in which we could uh, assign um, disassociated experiments. Uh, here, for example, sometimes uh, we cannot assign experiments to some courses because we have a course that is uh, given on Saturdays and sometimes the teachers decide not to come in on Saturday to the, <laughs> to the faculty and so on. No? But as you can see, no, uh, we can cover all the groups. Here it was because we only begin with uh, some of the courses just to try the model. No? Uh, this is the number of students we uh, have to attend and can't attend. No? Uh, here we begin to apply the model. No? This was the enrollment in past years. No? Always we have uh, had half the like uh, more than 100 students to attend at the same time, only with on 11. Uh, uh, groups in these two laboratories, but now mm, we can attend more and more students each semester, mm, just arriving to the 200 each semester. The yellow uh, bars represent uh, how many students are, have been beneficiated with this uh, uh, collaborative model. Uh, sometimes uh, there are groups that uh, doesn't have uh, enough number of ex ex associated experiments that uh, uh, we cannot guarantee uh, um, 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 uh, uh, grant uh, uh, that uh, all, the, all the students can do one of these experiments. But uh, as you can see, this is changing uh, more or less. Uh, 94 
95% of the students have been beneficiated of all of the students that are taking these courses. No? Uh, the enrollment, the, the total enrollment uh, since the model has been like 10,000 students. Uh, here I plot uh, the um, academic, uh, well, how, how many how many teachers have been working uh, or proposing an associated uh, experiment, only the associated, mm -hmm, per uh, institution or uh, academic entity. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, I, sorry, uh, we have obviously the Faculty of Science, sorry, okay, that is uh, this one, mm -hmm, the first. Uh, the Center of uh, Atmospheric Science, the Center of uh, Applied Science and uh, Technological Development, hmm? the Astronomy Science, the Nuclear Science Institute, the Physics Institute, uh, the Geophysics Institute, uh, Material Science uh, Institute, uh, Universum that is uh, a very nice museum uh, of science that also has laboratories to teach hmm, some specific things. And uh, in Can, I, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> in Can is the uh, National uh, Institute of uh, Cancerology. Uh, so, um, uh, as you can see, hmm, uh, the number of teachers teachers are uh, involved in these associated experiments is growing and the, the number of institutions that are participating also is growing. And this has obviously a reason. So here I depict the number of different laboratories or facilities that are involved in these uh, teaching experiments. Uh, we have uh, uh, between them most of them are uh, research laboratories, no? but also we have uh, some other uh, laboratories in which we teach other basic uh, experimental uh, courses no? here in, in, the, in our faculty. Uh, and uh, as you can see, there are uh, now a lot of facilities in which the students can do their experiments. Uh, one thing we uh, do every uh, finishing of the semester is a special congress for the students no? in which they can present the experiments they do, no? which uh, was the um, uh, el reto, um, the, um, the challenge, the, challenge no? the abilities they learned, uh, how difficult it was. No? Uh, the interesting thing is that, uh, well, the students make the experiments in pairs, they can present the, the experiment in pairs or alone, or sometimes even they can present uh, a, a experiment uh, by a whole uh, a group uh, of students, like four uh, teams, for example, because as each uh, rotation, no? uh, every, any, uh, any team could uh, propose changes or measure something different or change the equipment and or not the equipment but maybe the uh, some things to do with the experiment so at the end uh, with this for example four uh, steps no? uh, of of the la of lasting of the experiment became in a really big uh, bigger experiment no? that is complemented for each uh, team so they can present them. No? Uh, this uh, Congress I think is one of the uh, 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 one of one of the things that show the students uh, what is a specialized Congress, no? the, uh, the way they can uh, they have to express, the, the way they have uh, um, to, to do their presentations and so on. Hmm? This is uh, another way also to uh, uh, break walls. Hmm? Um, for uh, most of them, this is the first Congress uh, they assist and they present an experiment. So for them, a really a 
nice experience. They can uh, dress it really uh, elegant and so on. Hmm? Uh, here, just uh, to try to to understand if this is really uh, uh, helping to the students, I depict uh, the number of non-approved students hmm, in percent. Uh, our uh, grading system goes from five to ten. Hmm? Five is not approved. There is also something that we call uh, NP that is. Uh, no se presentó. No? He, the student doesn't present to the to the course in all the semester. No? So um, there are uh, nice tendency to this uh, uh, to get uh, um, lower, but uh, we can conclude many things here right now. No? Maybe in the future. But the thing with uh, the the thing we think is that uh, uh, if the number of students uh, that doesn't approve the, the course uh, uh, diminuate, uh, could be also because they are more motivated. No? They are abandoned less the course. So uh, all of this also has uh, more benefits. All, for students and for teachers. Hmm? Uh, I will talk more about this in the next uh, slide, but for, uh, for example, for uh, the interaction between students with uh, teachers that uh, presented that an associated, uh, sorry, that presented an associated uh, experiment, uh, some students did they social service that they have to do, no? mandatory uh, in for get the degree, uh, made thesis with them, no? uh, so they could uh, work uh, uh, with them more closely. Uh, they presented their works in other uh, specialized congress, in uh, international, national, but really specialized no? for uh, uh, experts. Uh, they uh, were authors like an equipment or like uh, lonely authors of uh, research articles or teaching articles hmm? and uh, well other benefits no? uh, uh, yes, any other kind of things so what we can conclude of uh, this uh, uh, experience uh, just uh, after these three and a half uh, years. Uh, this model, no, because of the collaborative uh, nature, uh, helps to uh, try deeper in research to the students, no, to uh, attract them to the things that are uh, doing right now in science, that are the things that they are, have to deal with if they want to continue in this. Hmm? Uh, promotes a collaboration, as I told you, between the students, between the uh, teachers also, because sometimes uh, the teachers talking between them, ah, you have this equipment, uh, you have this idea, we can uh, collaborate and do this thing, and in fact we had just experience in which they proposed a new uh, experiment during one semester. Uh, obviously, this model by uh, the nature, by his nature, stimulates the transdiscipline because we can uh, uh, work in different fields hmm? and obviously search resources. So uh, diminutes the necessities of the faculty or the school. Hmm? Uh, it, the more important thing, and I think is very interesting, is that it's a transfer uh, modular model. No, I think. Well, I. Uh, we apply this to physics, no, to only to specific uh, laboratories, but we can apply this to other laboratories of our uh, bachelor. But also can do uh, can can be useful for other disciplines, experimental or even not experimental, because of the nature of the model. Uh, last, because it's modular, it. Uh, 
allows the interaction between these different models. No? For example, this, this could be our network, this could be the network or other university or other institution, and perhaps uh, the, the students uh, not can can not only work here, but then go there and there, and so uh, we can uh, motivate uh, this uh, new kind of skills and ab abilities that the student has to have. For example, if we think in our program of uh, biomedical physics, no? maybe this is the part of physics, but maybe this is the part in a hospital, and this is the part in a more specialized medical research institute, and so on. No? This could be the uh, faculty of medicine, and this could be uh, the network of uh, healthy program of the country, etc. So, uh, the, all the things I presented, the model and so on, the numbers and why, how it uh, born, you can find here. Uh, but I hope you know, with this, uh, uh, you are. Uh, um, um, noticed no? that the thing we are doing, no? um, breaking walls, is really working, and I think we are here. All we all are here because we want that. No? So, uh, thank you very much. They, yes, yes, it's the it are mandatory courses. So it's uh, uh, each each teacher uh, grades uh, or evaluate their experiment. Uh, each uh, uh, rotation at the end of each rotation, uh, one, two, three, all the group uh, have a meeting and they present the results. And then it's when the, there are more uh, collaboration between the students and between the student, uh, the professors. No, the, the students say to the other team, uh, we. Uh, advise this, or we learn that, or this doesn't work, and so on. And there's an administrator, right? Because there's somebody who, who must organize this group, which is outside of, I guess, what normal professor does, if I understood correctly. Who, that person has now a kind of an important responsibility for oversight. Mm -hmm. What is the academic unit that the person is associated with? Is it a department or is it a college or where, or where do they fit in? Uh, well, all this, uh, I, I don't know if I understood very, very well your question, but uh, all these teachers are part, uh, they, uh, when they uh, participate in this uh, scheme, they come part of our um, a uh, group of teachers in the faculty, so they are recognized like uh, professors in our faculty. Maybe there is a, a researcher in a UNAM Institute, uh, they don't be paid, but if, uh, for example, the Incan person was paid, no? uh, and this is, uh, uh, in this hard administration thing, is the faculty. But uh, there are two levels of organization. No? If each group no? uh, and how they coordinate. And this is the the girl that was in the center of the cycle yes. that organized uh, one month. Then uh, you go to there, you go to that. We meet uh, in that in this day to have the our What's mini the meeting. The Where do they fit in? Ah. Mm, we have not the uh, distinction. It could be a full teacher of uh, our faculty, a technician that uh, usually teach this uh, course, or a professor that works in an institution, no? an, inst an institute or some, or some of that. No? And there's no resistance from teachers that are asked to do this? Yes, it was a lot. There's a lot of resistance, right? Yes. So how did you pull it off? How did you do it? Uh, well, uh, at the beginning was a little bit different, uh, bit difficult, but uh, at the end uh, um, we solve uh, many. Well, we solve a problem and we gain many things. The problem was we couldn't attend to all the students that wanted to. Uh, um, 
to study this course one semester. No? As you see, now we have to attend 12, uh, 200, and we were able only to, to attend 12 per 11. So this was a, a very important thing. And the other, I think uh, they can share hmm, uh, also uh, knowledge and uh, no, if not share, uh, by the two ways, I mean, no? search and uh, well, learn and teach hmm, between them. Hmm. And then is the outer uh, organization that is in charge basically by me and the coordinator of the, our bachelor. Okay, let's take that again. Thank you very much.